Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our Survivor 45 finale reaction. And it's fair to say we have a lot to react to. Like This was a crazy, crazy finale. Uh, just so everybody knows, you know, we have come on here to record mm -hmm. immediately after the results. We, we have not seen the after show slash reunion slash whatever it is that Probst is calling that now. Yeah, we just we couldn't wait to come on here and talk about Dee's big win because, <laughs> I mean, she really deserved this, in my humble opinion. I mean, Awesome played a, a great game, too. Jake, I mean, Jake. Oh, my goodness. That guy is the guy who just won't quit. He really wanted to, like, keep trying and making these moves. And even if they didn't work out, man, good for you for continuing to just keep trying to do something and make a move and not just, like, lean into an alliance. Like, you know, Jake, oh, man, I was so happy to watch him make that fire. That was, like, as much as I was happy that D won because she really did deserve this, Watching him make that fire for me was like the 10 out of 10 moment of the episode for me. I was like, man, you deserve that win because you ain't winning this season. No, it's, you know, it's, it is the moral victory <laughs> for Jake. And like, I know some people may roll their eyes at the words moral victory being thrown out there, but you know what? He had so much gone wrong for him this entire game. It was a train wreck after a train wreck. So to see him have that moment, to see him be at the final tribal council, and he probably didn't stand a chance of getting a single vote from the moment he went in there, but I thought he was really good in the final tribal council. I thought he stated his case very clearly. He was relatable. He was personable. I just wish that they had asked him more questions because clearly the way that the questioning was going, the jury was between D and Austin. He wasn't really being considered and it felt like that from the questioning. But before we get <laughs> too much further down into all of this and the details, just remember that Survivor 46, it's on its way. It's mm -hmm. going to be here February 28th, which is also my birthday. So yes. a nice birthday gift to me to have, you know, that on, you know, premiere on my birthday. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. And hit that subscribe button as well. So you don't miss any of that coverage. But also we have so much happening at the channel moving in to the new year. We've mm -hmm. still got Fargo season mm -hmm. five. We're right in the midst of that. We're covering the curse on Showtime mm -hmm. and True Detective Season 4, it feels like we've been waiting for this season for like 300 years. It's actually coming out next month. Also, if you're looking for some fun, like, action adventure over the holidays, Reacher is on right now as well. Yeah. Man, the start of, that just started. So if you want to jump in on something with us, that's a fun one. All right. I I am ready. I am issuing my, my battle challenge for the commenters here. I am prepared to do battle with this comment. We'll see if there's disagreement. Oh, okay. I have my hard right. hat on. Let's go. I think D is the best winner for a first time player since Tony in his first season. That is a long time ago, but I just think her game was that consistently dominant from start to finish. And I'll even go on a further limb here. And this is not to insult the great sandwich man, Austin. I think D deserved more votes. I think it being just the way that it was, I'm surprised that Austin got a few votes at the end of this. I'm shocked that it was as close as it was. Like I was really like seeing like one, then one, then one. I was like, wait a second, what is going on here? Like yep. I expected at least Drew. That's what I expected. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure he was going to give his vote to Austin. But after that, I was kind of like, this is going to be a pretty clean sweep for her, especially after seeing the back and forth of them talking at that, you know, final tribal council and stating their case and some of the moves that she made. And I saw Austin, you know, really trying to take credit for some stuff that he had a hand in, but she also had a hand in because let's face it, he had a hand in everything, <laughs> including some stuff that Austin did not know about until tonight. There were a couple of moments that I just found pretty hilarious with Austin in the final tribal. Number, number one was him trying to get out that pen so he could rewrite a little bit of the history books. And it just, it wasn't working. And the moment that D pulls out that she told Julie about what happened yeah. and she did not tell Austin before that tribal council, she set him up to fall on his face and was not there to lift him back up. He had to sit there on the ground, awkwardly trying 
to get up. It was that was the moment. That was the thing. Like I was okay. It's it's a wrap. D's got it. Oh yeah, for sure. I thought that was the moment that it was going to be very close to a clean sweep. She just set him on fire, and I was just like, and here we go. Like yeah. absolutely, that that was the move where it wasn't just like, oh, you guys were in an alliance together and a showman, and you know everyone else was dumb dumb enough to bring a showman to the end. You know, you guys all made that choice. You know, the only person that really tried to get this broken up was Jake. <laughs> And that's why I was like, it was, he, he tried so hard and he really just had some kind of bad luck on his side. He couldn't make like that one or two really good connections with somebody where they really trusted him. And that's why it was like, you know, it was so frustrating to see Katura change that vote at the last minute. And he was just like, I swore on my Nana. I'm like, yeah, but you guys just didn't have enough trust like you guys never really had enough trust like you could have like shown her the whole idol which you didn't been like i'm gonna play it on you i know that was her argument where she was like you should have told me it's like it wouldn't have made a difference he just swore on his nana he showed you the idol like none of it made a difference he really tried to be like here's my trust platter and you were like i am not eating off of that the trust platter could have been delicious. Like that is the, there's a couple of big takeaways from this finale. Like number one, I mean, we did get a really great winner, the right winner for this season. Yes. Yes. But number two, it is like one of the ultimate what if finales, because there are just these whiffs that happen And Jake. I mean, what was he? See, this is a good thing. I've already, I almost forgot your underwear, Jake nickname, but you were underwear Jake last week. This week you were Big whiff, Jake, because it is just like for most. Big whiff. Okay, you know, maybe you would prefer underwear, Jake, as a nickname. Let us know in the comments here, Jake. I felt he was kind of just driving around in the clown car because he was sort of stuck in this position that he couldn't get anyone to trust. And then it was like, Katura was like, hand me the keys. And then they went into tribal <laughs> together. And it was just such a gong show. But again, like, I love that Jake was taking these big swings. He was so unafraid. I really respect that. Yeah, I, I come out of this really loving Jake. Like, I, re I really wish Jake got a vote. I, I don't think Jake should have won. I, I'm not going completely insane here. But no, he shouldn't have won. Can we take, like, one vote away from Austin and give it to Jake? I just feel like he deserves a lot of credit for the amount that he continued to try to make moves. And we haven't seen, at least in my opinion, you guys can let us know if you have a lot of good comparisons, but... I don't think there's a lot of Survivor players over the years that have been someone who had a lot of good ideas just mm -hmm. constantly and had a lot of the right ideas, but just mm -hmm. continued to see them fall apart in the execution time and time yeah. again. And the biggest issue was he was unable to make those social connections with people who trusted him. Like without that, it doesn't matter what moves you want to make or what you need people to believe in you. And that's why the social aspect of this game is like, like so much more important than winning challenges or I have all these, you know, immunity wins or what, like all these, I like none of that really matters if you can play a really good social game. Cause I think this is just my hard hat is on all for right, this. Right. I think that if D didn't win all of these immunity, you know, challenges as well, her social game was so good. And she was running this game so well that People were doing anything that she needed them to do. It wouldn't have mattered. She still would have won this game. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. I mean, the moment that we get to Final Five in this episode, and Julie is basically just reiterating once again that she's got to be loyal to somebody, and she's going to mm -hmm. be loyal to D. And so at that point, it's like, okay, so there's five people left. We already have... Julie, who knows D's a big threat and isn't going to make a move. Austin is clearly not going to make a big move against D. So she is, no. despite being the obvious person who's going to win, these people still weren't interested in doing something because she had built up these relationships. And I mean, it was interesting to hear D sort of talk a little bit about, you know, luck in the game that, yeah, she ended up starting at a group with people who got along with each other. It's kind of like the reverse of Jake having to be with your guy, Bruce and Katura. But at the same time, 
D helped to facilitate that. Like you make your own luck sometimes. And she was able to build bridges, bring people in and make them all want to work with her. I was really surprised that she admitted at that tribal council that some of her game was luck. I was yeah. just like, what? Don't say that. Why are you saying that? Stop yep. talking. It was so odd. Like, and then there was another part that seemed to kind of come back to bite her. And I think she got very lucky that Katura ended up not being at the very end because I think Katura may have been able to get a vote or two. I still think D was going to win. I think D was going to beat everybody. I yeah. Just, that's how it felt to me. But when she was sitting on the beach with Katurin, she was like, listen, you're going to fire because I feel like you could beat me at the end. I was just like, in what game is Katura beating you? In what game is anybody that's there beating you at the end of this? Like, there's just no way. And then when we had Katura come in and just basically be like, yeah, do you think that I'm such a threat that I have to go to fire? No problem. I'll go to fire. I can be a threat and I can make fire. I was like, "Uh oh, <laughs> this may have all just blown up in her face if she goes there and she makes fire. I Yeah, I, I do wonder why D said that. I've I've tried to think a lot about it and I don't know if it's a situation where she was just trying to butter up Katura, so maybe Katura would give her a jury vote later, or it was a situation where she just felt that confident she was going to win regardless, and she wanted to make yeah. her feel good. But it was, it was a risk. And D, while I think she was extremely dominant, you know, it's hard to be a dominant player and not have a couple of things that you question. Like, I questioned Tony's game like a billion times on that first season he won. It was just... She had such an easy out to be like, Katura, you're going to fire because I'm in a showmance with Austin. You know he's my number one, and you know that I'm taking him. Like, you know, you let a showmance come to the end, so this is what was going to happen. Like, it was just the easiest thing to say where Katura would have been like... Yeah, I did let that happen. I had a chance to not let that happen. I didn't you know, <laughs> do anything about it. And now I'm here. I did this to myself. Okay, no problem. I'm making fire. That makes the most sense. You mentioned the word easy. And that's that it really ties into like this analogy I have in my head now is that maybe D was just like, you know what? Maybe this game is too easy for me. Maybe I need to start uh, switch to toggle right? on the hard mode and I'll make it a little more of a challenge for myself. I'll say this. I don't think she necessarily even started great in the final tribal council. I thought she kind of sputtered a little bit right out of the gate. But once she started to kind of get momentum and once once Austin really got to where he was trying to really not get into <laughs> arguments with her, but really get into a back and forth with her, it kind of became clear at that point that, okay, D was the dominant person in this alliance the whole time. Austin doesn't really have that much of a leg to stand on. No, which is why I was so surprised that it was as close as it was. Like, really surprised. One thing I will definitely say here is that it's very nice in the game of Survivor, and we don't see this all that often in general, that you have, like, a romantic connection out there and the woman is the person who gets the most credit. Like, it's usually the guy yes. who is just like, oh, you did everything. But it was so abundantly clear that that was not the case in this situation. I'm just glad that the jury was aware of that, that they acknowledged that. And I, I come out of this season feeling really happy for a lot of things in general. Probst didn't even screw this up that much at the <laughs> end. There weren't, like, that many ridiculous twist it's almost like he was like you know what it just isn't working maybe i'm actually going to listen to matt and jess who have oh, been right. saying <laughs> that i need to cut the you know what and just let these people play it was so like frustrating i do have to say about jeff where he was calling out jake in all of his missteps where it was like so hey you had this like you know advantage that you won and then you left the keys on the ground and then the puzzle and you miss this one piece it's like why are you calling all that out i know why you're calling it out but it doesn't help his game and i mean jake really tried to do the best he could where he's like ah eh, you know sometimes people choke and you know it happened and it happened and here i am i'm still here and i'm still playing i'm still doing my best but it's like those types of moments are really things that you know, continued to sink Jake, which I think was really unfair. But I've always felt that the line of question questioning yeah. sometimes with Jeff is like very sort of 
targeted i already have my hard hat on for you guys in the comments <laughs> okay. it's very targeted sometimes to really rip open and expose people that maybe this is just conspiracy allegedly is how i feel might not want them to be the winner like i mean d is a such a good winner mm -hmm. like she really deserved it and there's a lot of reality shows like big brother <laughs> Where a lot of times the person mm -hmm. who deserves to win doesn't win, right? And sometimes that happens on Survivor too. Yeah. But I find that a lot more on Survivor, there are winners where I'm like, yeah, that person actually deserved to win. And they got here in a way that feels like they deserve their win. And would Jake have deserved his win? I just don't think so. And it's not from his lack of like trying mm -hmm. because respect. Yeah. He really did try. He took some huge swings. I absolutely love him for it. He's got heart. He's, you know, doing everything that he can. He's kind of like an action hero in that way, just coming in, kicking over the challenge and trying his best. Like, I was just like, yes, this is what I love about Survivor. But should he have won? No. But did Jeff help him? No. I did laugh. I will. I, I'm not. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but I will find. I did find it very funny that he's asking all these other people serious questions, and he just looks over at Jake and is like, "Jake, why do you suck?" Yeah, it kind of was like the opposite of the seasons that Boston Rob was on, where he would ask normal questions to everybody else and be like, "Boston Rob, how does it feel to be the reincarnation of a god?" And it would. It, that's <laughs> that's oh. what it felt like a lot of the time when Boston Rob was on this show. And all of my favorite moments in this finale are about Jake. I will just say that from the very beginning, from Jake getting really mad at Katura for making him swear on his nana. To Jake breaking the challenge, like you mentioned. I was so glad to see Jake call out Katura for what happened with her changing her vote and all that yeah. in front of everybody. I was really glad that he was just mm -hmm. like, nah, we're talking. You know what? I don't even care anymore. We're just talking about it straight up so that everybody knows mm -hmm. that you and I were in on this together. You changed this at the last minute. Like, why did you do this? And she's like no man you should have told me what you were doing and you didn't and that's why we're here it's like no you're both here because you were both driving the clown yes. car and you've driven it here and now you're at the final four with a showmance well done this 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 season is just so gloriously chaotic and like 85 percent of it is because of just these two people like going back all the way to the caleb boat which by the way, it felt for a second that Caleb was maybe voting for Jake. Like I will, I will throw that out there. Yeah, there was a couple people that I thought could have voted for Jake. I actually kind of at some point thought that Katura might as well. Yeah, like she did seem to have some respect for him. And, you know, mo I think some of that was just she was kicking herself over, oh man, I can't believe I did that. But yes. like, they couldn't get it together with the no. Caleb vote. Everything with Katura and your guy Bruce, which has been extremely well documented at this point. Yeah. Did you, I felt like they were a little bit mean to Bruce at the final tribal council. Like they brought up, oh, you should have played it, Bruce. And the look on Bruce's face, Bruce just looked really sad. Like I wanted to give Bruce a hug. I feel like Bruce has been kicked around all season. Like I know that a lot of people allegedly on this tribe were like, yeah, he was irritating. He was yeah. too in your face, whatever, whatever. That wasn't the edit that I got. I mm -hmm. enjoyed watching him a lot. He seems like a nice, you guys all know, like yeah. I'm, I'm in Bruce's corner here, but I have felt that there's been a lot of kind of, meaner jabs like straight away emily's like on him They're, they haven't even left the boat yet and then you've got you know drew's comments about him like playing pretend survivor or whatever it's just yeah. like it was all season long on him like by the time we got to tonight and he was sitting on the jury he just looked like he had had enough like he had just been beaten down all season for no reason <laughs> This game, or maybe a reason, but I don't know. I wasn't know. there. Yeah, it, it's really hard to know on the outside looking in with some of this stuff because we do see a very particular edit on, you know, for this game. And the edit for a while has supported D as a winner. Granted, I say this as somebody who said that Caleb was getting a winner's edit very early on in the game. And I held true to that for probably longer than I should have. It felt like Emily was as well. Yeah. It was just that Reba 4. It was just like, how does a Reba person doesn't end up at the end? Yeah, it was just their dominance collected with just all the missteps from all the other people. Like, they deserve a lot of credit 
but these other people also deserve some blame for just repeatedly, as you have said, they, this was a very good season for the clown car. The clown car had a lot of fun over the course of Survivor 45. It was tough because the Reba four were just so strong with each other. And even when the other side had the numbers, trust, it's all about that social yeah. game and building trust. And the people on the other side just could not trust. They just wouldn't do it. Big picture here. I just think overall, this is probably my favorite season of like this quote unquote new era since winter is at war. I just feel like we had a pretty bad start. I will say that very clearly. With we the had, quitters. We had the quitters. But once we got past the quitters, yeah. I think we had a lot of fun people. I mm -hmm. think having a great winner really helps. I mean, there yeah. was a little bit of a steamroll, but I just felt like there were constantly people to talk about. And some of it the show deserves credit for because these 90 minute episodes worked really really well. Yeah, I love them. I mean, it it really helped because, I mean, the challenges usually take up a good portion yeah. of an episode. And if an episode's only an hour, I mean, you're spending a good, like, what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes on that? And yeah. It's just kind of like, okay, well then, when are we getting sort of the more relationships and, you know, that kind of thing? Get to know everybody a little bit more. These 90-minute episodes, they're where it's at. 10 out of 10 season. I I hesitate to say this. Should I say it? it. We right. already have our hard hats on. I feel like Survivor is going in the right direction now. Oh, I, the, I don't want to. Agreed. I'm, agreed. Yeah, I, I'm just afraid. I'm afraid that it's going to teeter the other. Like, I still have issues. Like, it's still too self-referential a lot of the time. I'm still not in all the twists. Like, that stuff is still a problem. I wish we'd go back to themes. I don't remember anything with Survivor insert number here, but I'm all right. I'm happy. And now the hiatus begins. Yep. Now we're waiting till February 28th, my yes. birthday. That's when it's going to be coming back, Survivor 46. And, you know, we'll be back for that as well. We're really excited. It's not It's not too long. Yep. Listen, it's almost Christmas. It's just a few days away. Then we're going to be in the new year. It's going to be here before you know it. Yeah, we are already excited. Of course, we're excited to hear what you guys think about this finale. And hit that subscribe button. As just noted, we have Reacher. We're very much in the thick of right now. It's a yeah. lot of fun if you want something to dive into over the holidays. Thank you to our patrons as well for mm -hmm. your support. We really appreciate that. And we'll see you here next time. Happy holidays.